Catherine Arnson, welcome to the Biohacking Secrets Show. Hey, Anthony. So glad to be here. <laughs> Can't wait the, to see what we cook up. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> and and what we uh, consume raw. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, I'm excited for this episode because we're going to get to go deep on a topic. I love when people are specialists in certain areas. And, and I've been a big fan of spirulina and chlorella and taking them for years. I had problems with heavy metal toxicity and Lyme disease back in the day. So both were like a vital part of my recovery and my gut was a mess. So it was, it was helpful to be able to consume these easily digestible superfoods. Yeah. Um, maybe you could give us a little bit of a background about how you ended up going so deep on, <laughs> yeah, on spirulina yeah. I'm, and chlorella. I'm uh, 12 and a half years into deep. I mean, who, it's crazy how deep I am, but, but it's very <laughs> exciting. And every day I learn more. So I'm not giving this up. And, uh, and as people will find out, um, I call algae your health insurance. It's actually your life insurance, your longevity insurance. And, and I'm going to get into some great detail to explain why it's all all science-based. So I don't make any of this up. If I don't have an NIH reference, I will not talk about it. <laughs> so, okay. uh, so, you know, you think to yourself, algae, how does somebody get involved with algae? Because, you know, it is a pretty crazy thing to do. And um, I was minding my own business. I'm actually Canadian. I've lived in Boston, though, for 33 years. And I, I did an MBA in international business and I had a, a decent career. Um, and then uh, 13 years ago, my younger sister in Canada developed breast cancer. Now, first of all, I want everybody to know that she's fine. She completely healed and we celebrate her being cancer free every year. But 13 years ago, as she was preparing for chemo, her oncologist, which is, of course, a cancer specialist, recommended she change her diet to an alkaline diet to help with her healing. Now, they didn't tell her what it was or why it was good for her. So the first call she made when she got home from that appointment was to me, her big sister who loves her. And also, I'm just a really good researcher. I can find out anything. <laughs> I probably should have been a scientist. Well, I guess it's, I am It's now. a very important skill these days yeah, to be yeah, a good I researcher. Am, I am the chief scientific officer, so I, I guess I am a scientist. So yeah. anyways, I said, I have no idea what this alkaline diet stuff is, but I will find out, and I did. And it was basically basically um, foods that were plant-based because of the chlorophyll and the phytonutrients that have been proven to help build your immune system and eliminating acidic foods like processed foods and dairy and all that sort of stuff. So, and, so and a lot of times they're <laughs> augmenting with like a bicarb formula, like four salts or, or, or a food grade aluminum free sodium bicarbonate as well. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that too. Um, but uh, anyway, so she did change her diet. She did go through chemo. She did completely heal. But uh, in the process of helping her, I ended up reading about 10 or 12 books, about 100 or 200 uh, NIH law um, scientific papers on alkaline diets and pH of the cells and blah, blah, blah. And, and it was pretty powerful stuff. And I thought, man, you know, why isn't anybody talking about this? Because this was 13 years ago and nobody was talking about plant-based nutrition. So I'm just a very passionate person. I thought, well, I have no idea how I can do this or why, or you know, whatever, but I'm going to get the word out. So I gave up my 25 year corporate career, had no money, by the way. So what, what a crazy thing to do. My family thought I'd gone off the deep end. But uh, I was determined to make a difference in the world, and I still am. I went back to school. I got a certificate in health coaching from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. So it was one a one year uh, course. Didn't give me a you know a huge depth, but it gave me enough breadth that I could at least talk about the topic. And then I put my own curriculum together, teaching people plant based nutrition at corporations and hospitals. And this is where my true epiphany occurred that really brought me to algae. And my epiphany was this. As I was teaching people the importance of eating more greens and vegetables, they told me, hey, you're not telling me anything my mother hasn't been trying to get me to do since I was a kid. So, <laughs> But the problem is, and this is where my epiphany came, is that it was just too much work. People knew what they should do, but it was too hard. Vegetables are heavy to carry home from the grocery store. They take a lot of room in your fridge. They take a long time to cook, to clean, to eat. There's endless arguments at the dinner table with kids, with husbands, and they go bad. They spoil very quickly. So I thought, okay, 
I've seen the science about plant-based nutrition and, and uh, alkaline diets. I need to find something that's fast and easy for people so they can get the nutrition they need without any of this hard work. So back to the drawing board I went, which was basically the internet. And I just looked at everything in a deeper dive that I'd found for my sister. And it took me months before I circled back to algae. But that's when the miracle happened. Because first of all, Algae is the most alkaline food in the world, and that's what got me started on this whole journey. And we can talk about the importance of uh, alkaline pH in your cells uh, later on and your blood. They're quite different reasons. Um, also, algae is the most, uh, has the highest concentration of protein in the world. It's been endorsed by the United Nations since 1974 uh, as the answer world hunger. They had a global conference on it, in fact, and you can just, you can even download the proceeds on, on the internet. It's been endorsed by NASA since for 50 years as the most nutrient dense food in the world. NASA says we have a quote from NASA that says one gram of algae has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of fruits and vegetables. One to a thousand. That's a big number. And we'll talk about it, but it's primarily because uh, microalgae, which is what we're going to talk about, is so tiny. It's called micro because you can't see it. it's microcosmic. Well, it's actually uh, it's so small that about something like a um, million cells could fit on the head of a pin. So, so alkaline endorsed by United Nations, endorsed by NASA. Oh, it's also been used in Asia for over fifty years, where it's a multi-billion. That's with a B, multi-billion dollar agricultural crop. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, algae is a food crop. It is not a supplement. It's grown in farms, just like uh, tomatoes are called hydroponic. I'm showing you a picture of an algae farm. You can't show me a supplement farm because there isn't one, but there are algae farms and 99% of them are in Asia. And also algae is the most studied food in the world. There's almost 100,000 studies documenting and proving some of the benefits that we're going to talk about today. There's about 60,000 for spirulina and about 40,000 for chlorella. So science-based, safely used, uh, endorsed by international agencies, uh, has all the nutrients that you would need ever. Uh, and the only problem it seemed was that nobody in North America or anywhere outside of Asia truly knew what it was or why it was good for them. And the quality was poor. But I realized I'd found the answer that I was looking for because um, to make it easy for people to get the nutrition that they need because um, the tablets, algae comes in these tiny little tablets. They're about the size of a baby aspirin. And each one of these tablets has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. And I'll tell you how the math on how that worked out. So if you took two or three or five or 10 a day, you would get all the nutrition that you need. And if you can swallow water, you can get the green nutrition that you need instantly and effortlessly. You never have to eat another vegetable again in your life if you don't want to. You know, some <laughs> people do. But uh, that was, the, that was the, the main reason, well, all the nutrition, of course, but the fact that it was effortless. Now you don't have to fight with your kids. Now you don't have to fight with your husband. You don't have to travel with bags full of broccoli if you don't want to. If you have gas from eating vegetables, or there's lots of anti-nutrients that we can talk about that are not in algae because you know there's no lectins or oxalates, and that's a that's a very those are very damaging proteins that can cause stomach distress and lead to autoimmune. None of it is in algae, and I can explain why. So the only problem was, like I said, nobody in America seemed to know about it. So I just decided I would spend the rest of my life bringing algae to America <laughs> and uh, uh, and making sure that it was the highest quality, safest, purest uh, algae in the world. Because uh, frankly, I wasn't planning initially on building a company. I just wanted to help my sister. And then I thought, well, I could help a bit, few more people when I went to school. And then when I stumbled onto algae, I realized, okay, this is a game changer for the world. And, uh, and it is. And it's probably going to be the biggest food industry of the 21st century. I just happen to be way ahead of my time. But I'm eager to get people familiar with it because it is here to stay. It's going to be bigger than CBD, collagen, uh, um, any, anything that exists because of the nutrient profile that is unmatched anywhere in the world. So it's pretty exciting. <laughs> it's super exciting. And then especially because like with everything that's happened these past few years, I think people are becoming more and more aware of the importance of the sun and, and yes. capturing sun energy and not just optimizing vitamin D through supplements, but actually getting it from the real McCoy 
right? Yes. That that yes. giant flaming ball in the sky that yeah. that allows life to exist as we know it on this planet. And um, one of the most exciting things that that I know about algae, and I'd like to to hear some of the other things that you're really excited about, is that it actually allows your cells and your mitochondria to capture more photonic energy from yeah. the sun. So oh, it's like can... the, the same amount of time you're actually able to absorb and, and utilize more of the sun's energy. Yeah. Um, I could hardly wait to get into the mitochondria discussion because I'm going to blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess let's, let's, let's do it. Let's start with, but, let's start with mitochondria and then, well, and then we'll, we'll kind of dance around. Yeah, I think if it's okay with you, I'd like to explain what algae is because then it will put uh, the, that, it will prob- give you the that probably it, makes sense. It yeah. will give you the context and the backdrop <laughs> for when I get into the really juicy stuff. Yeah, so there we go. It's, Let's like, do it. It's, it's, and it's with science that's been around for 60 years, but no one connected the dots like I have. And this is just in the last month I've done this and it just flips me out. It just, <laughs> I can't wait to share this with the world. So, um, but let's go back to what algae is. So first of all, algae was the first life on earth uh, close to two or three billion years ago. And this will become a very important uh, nugget of information to remember when we circle back to mitochondria, the fact that algae was the first life on earth. And and, uh, um, the first one was spirulina, which is technically a bacteria. It's called a cyanobacteria. And uh, then it was followed by uh, chlorella about a billion years later, which does belong to the plant kingdom, but it's really not technically a plant because it doesn't grow on earth. (laughs) It grows in the water. So um, there's two main categories of algae. One is called macroalgae and the other one is microalgae. Now we're going to be talking primarily about microalgae, but let me tell you what macroalgae is just so you understand what it is. It's that big stringy stuff that washes up on shore, also known as seaweed. It's called seaweed because it's only in the sea. (laughs) Um, It's also known as kelp or dulse, but it's from the sea. And it is important for you because there's lots of fiber and iodine because it comes from the ocean, but not can't hold a candle uh, nutritionally to microalgae. So we're not going to really talk about macroalgae. Microalgae is microscopic in size. That's why it's called microalgae. And like I said, about a million of these cells could fit on the head of a pin. Now there's tens of thousands of strains of microalgae. Uh, The three people know the most of are blue-green algae, uh, green, and red. Now, and I need to point that out because uh, lots of times people hear about, you know, toxic blue-green blooms, algae blooms, you know, closing your favorite beach. Well, Mm -hmm. it's not going to be the one we're going to talk about, which is spirulina, because spirulina and chlorella are the two algae that are harvested in fresh water as food crops. So they, so their brothers might be out in the ocean uh, and are blue green, but it's not spirulina or chlorella. So mm. don't panic if you read about a blue green algae bloom toxic and you think, oh, I can't have spirulina because it's toxic. No, it's just the algae that's in the ocean. And by the way, poor algae gets the bum rap because algae only shows up when there's already bacteria in the water. Algae is the cleanup crew. So- I was t- going to say that I lived in Florida for three years and you would have when, when those blooms would occur, it was when companies were dumping their byproducts yeah. into the ocean. The algae would then bloom and then it would get blamed for closing the beach. Exactly. Whereas it's the sugarcane factory that's dumping a whole bunch of chemicals into yeah, the ocean exactly it, it's these big corporations that are the well, problem, i'm so glad that you know Nation. that um, yeah. because uh, algae is actually used at virtually every water treatment plant in the in the world certainly in north america for that very reason that it kills bacteria so mm-hmm. so poor algae i feel really I, i'm proud to be algae's uh spokesperson because it can't speak for itself but um <laughs> but anyway so so algae uh does exist everywhere but um there's thousands of strains and the three then the two that are most common are the two that are harvested as food crops, as agricultural crops, and one is spirulina and one is chlorella. So let's talk about spirulina first, because it was the first algae um, uh, to show up on Earth. And so uh, spirulina is known for being energizing and nourishing. And so we call ours energy bits for that reason, because we thought it would help people understand what it is. And it's, by the way, it's in a blue package because it's a blue green algae. (laughs) Okay. So um, you say, well, how does it give me energy? Well, spirulina is known, as I'd mentioned, for having the highest concentration of protein in the world. And not only is it high protein, 
the protein is already in amino acid form. So there's nothing for your body to break down to get access to the, those aminos. And it's a complete protein. It has all nine of the uh, uh, aminos that your body can't make. And it has 18 of the 20 aminos in total. So it's a rich source of protein. So now um, all this, uh, and here's the other cool thing, as I mentioned, alluded to, spirulina is a bacteria. It does not have a cellulose wall. So here you've got this thing with all this rich protein, no cellulose wall for your body to break down to get access to it. And it's loaded with B vitamins. B vitamins convert glucose and protein into energy. So, and it's steady energy. It's not uh, a rush or a crash like you would get from carbs or from sugar or from caffeine. It's just steady because it's, it's, it's very dense. Um, spirulina is also loaded uh, with iron that carries oxygen that gives you energy. It's known as a vasodilator, which opens up your blood vessels so that more blood and oxygen and nutrients can flow. Um, it's uh, got it's loaded with essential fatty acids, which help with your your brain and your inflammation. It has boron, which helps with your synapses. So it's it's um, and it's just it's got forty vitamins and minerals, including all of the electrolytes, potassium, calcium, magnesium. So it's it's a complete food. In fact, I'm the one that know, found out that it's has the same nutritional profile as virtually uh, virtually the same as mother's breast milk, which we all know is the perfect food. Well, after the age of two, you can't very well have breast milk, so spirulina is pretty much your next best shot and we'll i'll send you the chart so you can you can see that so so because spirulina is so nourishing um uh, has so much protein it satisfies your hunger and there are zero carbs so it's really terrific if you're doing intermittent fasting if you're an athlete um because this gets into your system we were a sports nutrition company for the first three or four years because the runners and the triathletes and the cyclists found out about us and they found out that it gave them steady energy, not physically, but not just physically, but also mentally, um, and did not set their stomach like all those carb and sugar-based um, products did. So, mm. um, and it's it's so safe. You can give it to um, newborns, to your children, your pets, your teenagers, your grandparents. It at least ours. I can't speak for other algae companies, and I will tell you some of the things that make us different and special. But ours, for sure, is probably the safest, purest food you could ever put in your mouth or your family's mouth uh, and give them all the nourishment that they need effortlessly. <laughs> so it, it replaces uh, things like CoQ10 and biotin and a, a multivitamin definitely replaces fish oil. Um, and I tell people, well, where do you think the fish get their omega-3 from? They get it from algae and they just consolidate it. But most fish oil is rancid by the time you buy it. And of course, it's not helping the oceans or the ocean environment. So skip the skip the middleman, go straight to this, the original source, which is spirulina. Not so much on chlorella, but certainly spirulina. Now, the numbers won't be as high as they, you will find in supplements. The reason why those numbers in supplements are so high is because everybody in the supplements industry knows your body only absorbs about 10% of what's in there. So algae, because it's food um, and because it's, it's certainly spirulina is a bacteria, it's virtually 99% bioavailable. So um, there's not as high as, as high numbers, but it's efficient nutrition. <laughs> you need less of it to accomplish more. <laughs> so very, very exciting uh, that spirulina um, does all these great things. Now, when I first started the company, I found out after a year or two that women weren't buying the spirulina. And I asked my girlfriends and they said, well, you got to make it pink and give it a cute name. And because spirulina has such high protein, which builds the, your skin collagen, oops, um, and uh, has so many antioxidants, I made a second version of spirulina and called it Beauty Bits. But they're absolutely identical. I'm not trying to trick anybody. But, you know, I started the company because of my sister. And uh, so women's health is very important to me. Now, um, we have some presentations that, and I did, I always do deep dives. We found out that there's actually more collagen in spirulina than there is in collagen powder. And of course, collagen powder is not a sustainable crop. And so spirulina, if you want to level up from your collagen powder, this is your answer. So, Get but anyways, that's I've never heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. I'll show you the chart. There's up to four. And by the way, collagen is not a complete protein. It's missing tryptophan. Um, and it's it's also missing 
three of the minerals uh, or vitamins that are required for your body to absorb the collagen, and there are they're automatically in the algae. The the collagen powder companies add it, but um, I'm a purist, and I'd rather go with uh, what, what comes naturally. So so in general, spirulina people take it in the morning, if, you know, as they head out the door, um, afternoon slump when you're feeling a little tired because it wakes up your brain uh, before a workout. Um, it, when you're traveling, it's it, the, the tablets travel so easily. Um, and again, I, I'm going to show you that just so you can see the color. There's two colors, two pigments in spirulina. It's a blue pigment and a green pigment. We're going to talk about chlorella next, which is a green algae because it only has one green pigment. And I'm going to tell you in a minute the importance, a couple of the important things about the, that blue pigment that's in spirulina it has very yeah. interesting healing properties. Oh, I'm so, I'm loving this and just thinking about how how easy it is to get good nutrition or how difficult it is to get good nutrition when you're traveling and how easy it is to bring with you some spirulina and chlorella. Right. I mean, that's, that's a fantastic travel hack right there. Yeah. And you mentioned kind of three problems that occur as we age, especially for people that are on a plant-based diet. One that's quite common is low iron, even bordering on anemia, you know, when you, yeah. when you cut out meat and you have, iron in your spirulina. Another one is especially for men, well, and women too, it just, it just manifests differently, but is, um, circulatory issues down there. Let's just say, right. <laughs> so you have, this, you have this Good vasodil for the nation. <laughs> vasodilation that is going to help you continue to perform and enjoy connecting with your, you know, your partner or, yeah, or, or you got partners. It. And, um, and then you have on the collagen side, addressing the wrinkles that yeah. are an inevitable part of aging or are they, you know, yes. it's, it's, I think it's a very well, exciting thing. Yeah. Okay. You, you have so very few, if, if any, I have no wrinkles and uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're sitting down because I'm almost 66. Hey, congratulations. Okay. So I am, this is what algae does for you. Um, uh, you know, there's no Botox here. It's, it's the real deal. So and your, your, your brain's fast as a whip. Yeah. Yeah. It just, this stuff works. I just want people to know that, you know, to start using it because I'm not going to be the only one when I'm 120 and by myself. And, you know, because <laughs> uh, this stuff will get you to the, the finish line and we, and you'll find out when I start talking about mitochondria and, you know, you should don't walk, run and get yourself some spirulina because this will save your life. Seriously. I'm um, curious, okay. like we're going to get into to more of this stuff and protocols and things, but how much do you take on a day? Cause like I've been taking, you know, a whole one of your packets They're they taste great. They're easy. Yeah. I just throw the whole thing down and chase it with yeah. a little bit of water. But how much do you take on a daily basis? Well, we, you know, and, and I don't, I, I stopped telling people because some people got a little offended by how much I was taking. I think for the average person, you know, five would be a good start. If you can get to 10, that's better. Um, it, and because it's food, it's completely personal. Uh, if you're an elite athlete and you're going to go for a long run or a good workout, you probably want the full 30 or if you're a big person like you, the, uh, it just, it'll satisfy your hunger longer. It will just more just gives you more. Um, yeah. but some people are so anemic that even one or two tablets, because they're, they're missing such critical nutrition can make a difference. Um, so I don't want to force people to be taking large quantities unless they want to. I mean, I, we, I enjoy taking large quantities of good things. Yeah. 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 We fuel, uh, five or six NHL, uh, teams and they put 75, which is about a, a full tin of this. They put all of that in their smoothie before a game. And then they put uh, 75 of the chlorella in a smoothie after the game. We're going to talk about chlorella next because chlorella does a lot of cool things, including pulling out toxins uh, like lactic acid. So it's, it uh, speeds up the recovery and their muscles aren't as sore. But um, I absolutely love the chlorella myself personally. I mean, I take some spirulina in the morning. I have like probably about 10 in the morning. and uh, But I have probably... 30 or 40 or 50 chlorella. I have them with sea salt or <clears throat> pistachios or macadamia nuts. And I snack on them literally all day long. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and one, and I, when we get to chlorella in a second, uh, it, it has a nutrient in there that really does 
uh, support your skin um, and, and it supports anything that's got soft tissue in it, which is uh, unique to chlorella, not so much in, in spirulina. So, so um, as we compare the two allergies, you're going to learn a lot about why they're so different and the different things that they do. So if spirulina, again, is very satisfying for your hunger, very energizing mentally and physically, um, vasodilation. And so it's very much an energizing algae. Chlorella, as you're going to learn, is a health and wellness algae um, and operates in a completely different way than, than spirulina. So um, one of that one of those nutrients that are in chlorella is vitamin K2, which I'll talk about in a second. So some days I have as many as 80 to 100 chlorella. Um, but, uh, you know, I have a minimum of probably 50 a day uh, and at least 10 spirulina a day. But I'm not suggesting that people need to have that much. I have digestive issues with a lot, a lot of, I can't eat fiber. I can't eat sugar. I can't eat dairy. Um, I'd probably be a great candidate for a carnivore, <laughs> but um, uh, uh, so, so this fills a lot of my gaps, uh, both for snacking and for meals and for travel. Um, mm -hmm. And I just happen to love the flavor and it happens to be my company. So I'm, I don't know, frankly, what I would do without it. I, I honestly, I'm so grateful that it's I'm, I'm involved with it because it's a lifeline for me nutritionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, sorry, we have uh, we have some of the, the the dogs as greeting committee going off right there. That's okay. Um, so on, on a daily basis, if you were to estimate for you on average, how many spirulina tablets do you take and how many chlorella tablets do you take? Well, I don't really want to use me as an example because I'm so out of the ordinary in so many ways. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, if, if you can get 10 to 30 a day, that yeah. would be fantastic. But yeah. even less is fine fine you know or even less you know five is fine i don't want people to feel they have to you know super consume uh wow. and we sell them in large bags of um of a thousand tablets i'm going to show you uh, yeah. sure and so there's a thousand tablets in there so if you had 10 a day that would last you three months and right. while i've got this up i'll show you that we have a that quote from nasa that says one gram of algae has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of fruits and vegetables. So I did the math based on the weight of our bag and figured out one bag has the same nutrition as 551 pounds of vegetables. And at $3 a pound, that's $1,500. But a bag is 125 and we have a 20% discount code to offer your community. But what I'm saying is you get 551 pounds worth of nutrition in this little bag. So, and it never goes bad. It never spoils like vegetables. It won't give you di stomach distress like vegetables will. It doesn't have any anti-nutrients like vegetables do. You don't have to cook or clean it like vegetables do. So it's very efficient nutrition. And um, uh, it, it just, you, in fact, it never goes bad ever. I mean, we put an expiry date on it, but it never technically goes bad. And it's a, a unique uh, feature of algae. And I can tell you more about that later. So, so I yeah. think- if people aimed for 10 a day, they, that would be great. And it replaces snacks, uh, protein bars, pro fuel, uh, um, it can be a meal replacement. If you had 20 or 30, that, that's a meal. There's only one calorie per tablet. So people lose a lot of weight uh, using this to support any kind of weight loss goals. Um, it's a great, it's a great hack for anyone doing um, any kind of keto diets. Cause again, it's ketogenic. Mm -hmm. Uh, does not decrease your ketones or increase your glucose. And we've done tests with real people at conferences. And it's also uh, documented in science for that reason. So um, I think there's pretty... really something here with, I mean, for some people, I know some people that do great with carnivore. I know some people that do great with just a vegan template and, or, or cyclical carnivore, cyclical vegan, you yeah. know, but, but th there is an opportunity here to merge the two worlds. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and kind of get the best of, of both. Um, LG plays with everybody in the sandbox, paleo, yeah. vegan, low carb, low cal, carnivore. It just, it makes no distinctions. It's the most inclusive food in the world and harms no one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. So if, if for someone like me, who's uh, an, an admitted extremist, and I mean, I can take down one or two of your bags no problem and i enjoy it you know what yeah. i mean i think there's like 30 in there yes um yes. 
I work out every day pretty hard. I want my brain firing on all cylinders. What's the point of, would you say, diminishing returns? I'm like a 200, 200 pound guy, physically active, doing a lot of work during the day, cognitively demanding. Where am I going to top off? And you're like, okay, if, if you start to, if you take over a hundred of these things, probably diminishing returns or it, do you have any idea? Yeah. Well, um, we can cover some of that when we get into the mitochondria health thing, because it depends on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, in, in my talk, I'll be talking more about this. The, there are higher amounts of mitochondria in the parts of your body that require the most amount of energy. And you're going to mm -hmm. love this. Your brain, in your brain, you have 2 million mitochondria per cell. Yeah. Two million, okay? Uh -huh. And your muscles are the next highest con con uh, content of mitochondria. It's 5,000 mitochondria per cell. So your heart well, is a, a big muscle. Difference. And your muscles are, are you know, anything with, with muscles. Well, yeah, your liver is only about 1,000. Your average cell, like your skin, is only 100 mitochondria per cell. It's where the big energy gobblers are, which are like your muscles. Brain, and your eyes, brain. which are technically so brain. So this is yeah. why you have to judge for yourself where your upper limit is, where the max returns come from. Because if you are an athlete and you're working out hard like those NHL players, you know, they, they need, they took 75, they could probably put a hundred in there in their smoothie because they have high needs for energy in concentrated periods as they skate on the ice. Um, and we found we work with, we, you know, we, we worked with so many Olympic athletes. I sent some of my team to the winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. Don't even want to talk about Russia right now. But anyways, um, the elite athletes, same thing. They have so many muscles. And so they have so many mitochondria per cell in their muscles. They, you know, they, they probably could never top off. But if you're sedentary and don't exercise or, or um, don't have, you're not thinking a lot or you're not moving a lot, then you have, um, you will have, unfortunately, this is the downside, fewer mitochondria, which of course produce your ATP, which is your source of energy. Mm -hmm. So when you have fewer mitochondria, you're going to have less energy. So if you're sedentary, I would urge you to, to step it up because then not only will you feel better, you'll have more mitochondria because they, they populate when they are stressed and exercise stresses them. So mm -hmm. that's why you get better muscle development once you start exercising. It's not just the muscles, it's the mitochondria in the muscles. It all starts to make sense. That's why I love algae so much. It makes complete sense when you understand the nutrients that are in it and how the body functions. I had to, I am completely self-taught on biochemistry and physiology and you know, to a great uh, plant biology, cellular biology. But the deeper I went, the more it made sense. And I, as I said, I found this recent little final missing piece to the, to the puzzle, uh, just uh, really like a couple of weeks ago and it just blew me away and I'll, I'll share that with you in a minute. But so it really depends on, on your lifestyle, your physique, um, and uh, to determine how, uh, where you would top off uh, on your algae needs. Uh, but I will say it's a great replacement for so many things. Like I said, you might, you know, if, if you're a carnivore, you, you're not eating vegetables anyways, but there are nutrients that you do need. And we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, so you don't have to add vegetables. If you're paleo, this is as ancestral as it gets. It, there is mm. nothing that was on earth before algae. So it is truly ancestral. It's also vegan. Um, mm -hmm. And yet it gives the vegans nutrients that they don't even get like B12 or maybe not enough iron. Um, and, and, and yet it's still, and it's ketogenic. It doesn't interfere with any kind of keto, uh, ketosis, metabolic health issues. It's great for diabetics metabolic health uh, diseases. Um, that's why it's it's just all around great. And you can't, I will say the more you take, and maybe you've noticed this, Anthony, I don't know, uh, your poop will be a little green. <laughs> yeah, I, I've gotten the green, I've gotten the green poop. <laughs> but uh, that's a, you know, I, I say it's a badge of honor because it shows that the chlorophyll is making its way through your colon. And, and, and we, you know, we'll talk about chloral in a second because it has the highest chlorophyll in the world. And you're going to find out why you want chlorophyll in as soon as I start into chlor chlorella. 
was. So yeah. um, it's really a personal preference and a lifestyle choice, how much you take. Um, and Makes don't, sense. Get, don't get scared by the sticker shock of the cost of a bag. Uh, there is, by the way, cheaper algae out there, but I urge you not to buy it because you're going to find out in a minute why. Um, uh, it's uh, poor quality and you'll need three or 10 times as much of it to get yeah. the same benefits from ours. Ours is, as I keep saying, it's efficient nutrition. <laughs> years years ago, I tried some of some of the cheaper brands and, and could tell a difference. It yeah. did not, it just didn't work the same. I didn't yeah. feel as good. It didn't taste as good. And, um, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd like to talk about why in just a yeah. moment, but basically yeah. you're saying, so like your athletes, so like Olympic athletes, they're doing like 75 to a hundred pre and post game or pre and post workout. Well, you know, Maybe not a hundred seven. You know, I haven't documented a hundred. I have heard seventy five, um, yeah. but certainly thirty. If you're going to do a marathon or a run, or you want a good workout, um, yeah. if you're in that sort of hardcore work, you know, serious working out mode. But if yeah. you just want a decent workout, fifteen or twenty, you could probably do the thing. Everyone's different, so um, some days you may only need. 10 and other days you might need 30. It, it, it's like Good everything. Point. It's, just, it's yeah. just how you're feeling that day and what else is going on, how stressed you are and how your digestion is. So um, yeah, love it. So, yeah. And, and you know, you, we, you'd kind of touched on the Stephen Gundry's brought a lot of attention to uh, anti-nutrients like yes. the, the phytates and the lectins and the oxalates, some of the, the problems with plants and their defense, defense mechanisms that can cause digestive distress and inflammation in us when we consume them. Right. And none of those are issues with algae. And here's why. So the plants are land-based and to over uh, evolutionarily, they develop these um, proteins that are toxic. They taste terrible. Uh, they are, um, they damage the bugs and the animals as much as they damage animal or human stomach lining. This is how, where we feel it, feel it. So that was their defense mechanism to keep predators, bugs and animals away from them so they could, could they could survive and grow on the land. Well, here's the thing. Algae's not grown on land. It never had to develop those lectins and oxalates to defend itself because it came from the water. It's grown in water. So it's never had to develop lectins or oxalates. So it doesn't offer, it offers you the benefits of of plants and none of the downsides, like, like those sorts of things. So it's, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It makes me wonder for people that are dealing, you know, that, that are at the extremes of digestive disorders where, you know, it's like shakes and juice and, and, you know, algae and things like that and, and carnivore, whether there's a protocol here, because, you know, there's like the elemental diet and some of that stuff, but you're basically like drinking gruel every day and it's not yeah. really a long-term sustainable solution, but yeah. the integration of different allergies, the integration of different types of, of meats and organ meats, especially if they're grass fed and from good animals, yeah. I could see yeah. that potentially bringing someone back to a state of vitality that yeah, exactly. feels like, feels like they, they quote unquote, can't eat anything. Yeah. Well, let me get into chlorella because the chlorella has yeah. been used for decades for IBS and Crohn's disease for that reason. Mm. Um, and uh, it, it, I'll circle back to the vitamin K2, which helps with uh, preserving skin and other issues. So, so as I mentioned, spirulina came first and about a billion years later, you have chlorella. Now chlorella does belong to the plant kingdom because it does have a cellulose wall. And in fact, that cellulose wall is the hardest cellulose wall in the plant kingdom. Now it's just a little bit. So you get a little bit of fiber to feed the gut biome and the bacteria, but not enough to cause any kind of stomach distress. And I am a classic example. I cannot eat virtually any vegetables because I, I used to for all my life. And I finally, I couldn't take it anymore. And then when I stopped eating them, I felt great. And I get all my benefits from, from the chlorella. So here's the two amazing things about, well, there's at least five or six amazing things. There's a thousand great things about it. So as I mentioned, spirulina has the highest protein in the world. Chlorella has the highest chlorophyll in the world. And this is why I want the the um, the carnivores in the room uh, to pay attention to this too, because um, this is really important. So I just dropped something. 
Um, so you may say, well, what's so important about chlorophyll? There's a couple of things I'm going to show you. Um, here's a chart that shows you the blood, the chemical composition of your blood. And this is the chemical composition of chlorophyll. Notice that they're virtually identical. That's because they are. You can go on any science book or online, you'll see the same thing. The only difference is your blood has iron in the middle. That's what carries uh, oxygen. And mm -hmm. chlorophyll has magnesium in the middle. Otherwise, they're identical. Chlorophyll builds your blood. It, mm -hmm. it, it has been used forever up until even as recently the World War II uh, for uh, in surgeries and to uh, when it, people were really sick for this reason. And even in World War II, when they ran out of blood for transfusions, they would give the patients liquid chlorophyll because oh it would build their blood as quickly as if a blood it had a blood transfusion. So when you have healthy blood, you're going to have a health, much healthier brain, organs, oper you know, just metabolic everything, digestion, uh, elimination. It's been used as, you know, for, for cleansing breath. It kills bacteria. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So if you're not eating vegetables, and even if you are eating vegetables, they're useless in terms of chlorophyll. If you haven't noticed lately, if you buy arugula like I used to, it goes yellow after about three days. That's mm -hmm. because all of our soils are so damaged. They're so overcropped or now they're grown far, far away and they're harvested before they're ripe. And so the nutrients mm -hmm. don't get out to the leaves or the fruit or whatever. So you're eating things that have fiber, probably pesticides and mm -hmm. calories, but not nutrition. And chlor chlorella has 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula. It has a thousand times more chlorophyll than Chinese greens, even 25 times more than liquid chlorophyll. There is nothing in the world with more chlorophyll than chlorella, which is why it's called chlorella <laughs> because of the chlorophyll. So number one, build your blood. Okay. Number two, uh, one of the, all of your health issues start at the cellular level and we will get to the mitochondria, I promise in a minute. But one of the key things with your cells is you have to have permeable cell walls so that nutrients can get in and toxins can get out. Well, chlorophyll is a fat based pigment. So it helps facilitate that. The way I described it to people is, you know, when you have dirty windows, you can't see out and sunlight can't get in. So think of chlorophyll as window washers for your cell walls. And I'm going to show you something really cool. I put some spirulina tablets in a plate of water and you see the beautiful blue color. That's the phycocyanin. That's the second pigment oh. that's, in, um, that's in spirulina. But what I want you to notice is how it disperses mm -hmm. evenly through the water, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, here's chlorella. Just one color because it's just chlorophyll as the pigment. But see how it clumps? It doesn't mm -hmm. disperse like this. It's brother over here, spirulina. I did this experiment 20 times until I finally had my epiphany and I validated it with science. Chlor chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. Fat mm -hmm. and water don't mix, right? Mm -hmm. Phycocyanin is a water-based pigment, which is why it helps heal your cell walls or, or your uh, blood vessels. It stops the growth of, of blood vessels to tumors. So that's a whole nother topic. But anyways, chlorophyll builds your, helps support your the health of your cell wall just as much as something like an omega-3 would uh, or D3 or any of the other fat, healthy fat-based uh, vitamins. So really important that way. Um, the other thing about chlorella, that hard cell wall, it attaches to toxins. It has been used for centuries for pulling out lead, mercury, radiation, aluminum. Um, the uh, United Nations used it at Chernobyl to pull out radiation. They used it at Fukushima. After the Fukushima disaster, the global supply of chlorella was bought up within 24 hours. Uh, we work with uh, biological dentists who use it to pull out mercury when they take out fillings. Um, yeah. It also will pull out alcohol. It detects alcohol as a toxin. You are sober in an hour and a half and you will never have a hangover. It doesn't matter whether it's wine, beer, spirits. Um, and it uh, identifies lactic acid as a toxin. So athletes take it after their workout as their post-workout. It's still loaded with protein, 60% protein, 40 vitamins and minerals, chlorophyll to help um, uh, you know, build your immune system, but that toxins, it pulls out the lactic acid. So, so chlorella is very much a healing algae. It's a wellness algae. So it helps you recover from anything. So we call ours recovery bits because we thought that was easier to say than chlorella. And notice that it's in a green package. 
because it's a green algae. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trying to make Very it easy. Nice. Yeah, um, I like I like your design too. Thank you. Thank you. So a couple of things about chlorella. I've just mentioned the top ones. It's highest chlorophyll, which builds your blood and your cell walls. A hardest cell wall that pulls out toxins. Fiber to build the gut biome, but without stomach distress. But it also is loaded with, um, our, has the highest RNA and DNA in the world. And as you age, those get damaged. And so this helps um, support and rebuild your RNA and DNA in a healthier fashion. It has the highest tryptophan in the world. People think Turkey has it, but no, it's got five times more tryptophan than Turkey. And tryptophan is a precursor to both melatonin, which helps you sleep, and serotonin, which is your happy brain neurotransmitter. So um, it facilitates sleep. It uh, has the the, uh, daily requirement of a vitamin called K2. Now, a lot of people may not be familiar with K2, so let me give you a little backdrop. It's related to K1, but completely different. <laughs> I know it sounds a little oxymoron, but um, so K1 is any anything that's green, right? Um, and animals have an extra bacteria in their gut that allow them to convert K1 found in grass or anything to K2. So back as far back as the 60s, um, we were getting K2 in our diet because we were eating animals that were grazing on pastures. They would eat the, K- K- the grass with K1, convert it to K2. We would eat the animal and protein, and we would get K2. And then in the 70s, the, the farmers realized if they fed the animals corn and moved them into enclosures, they would make a lot more money because the animals would get fat a lot faster overnight. The daily um, uh, supply of K2 in our diet disappeared. And at exactly the same time is when heart disease started escalating. Because here's what K2 does. K2 moves excess calcium out of soft tissue and moves it into your bones. Examples of that soft tissue are your blood vessels. You know, when you hear about arterial sclerosis, the hardening of the arteries, guess what's hardening? Calcium is a good part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you talk about um, kidney stones. I think mean, metals are an issue with that too. Yeah, yeah. You know, kidney stones are made of calcium, um, and for your skin, calcium is as damaging to your elastin and your collagen as anti uh, free radicals, because and and elastin is the structure that holds up your skin, and then it's filled in with the collagen. So when the elastin gets damaged, it collapses, which causes wrinkles. Now, because I have I eat so much of it, I think that's why I don't have any wrinkles. So it's very protective of your skin and your brain. They're realizing some of Alzheimer's is partly a result of calcification of brain. So it's very important to get K2 into your diet. But here's the thing. It's only available in grass-fed animal protein or algae. Chlorella has twice the amount as spirulina. You can buy um, K2 uh, supplements now, but they're made from uh, fermented chickpeas and they are not the type of K2. Uh, K2 is a very complicated vitamin. But it's not the type that can penetrate your brain. The, mm. the, the K2 form, I think it's called M4, that can get into to all your cells only comes from animal-based um products that are grass-fed or from the algae uh, mm. or a di- there's a co- dish called natto that the yes. japanese eat all the time it's which really, is which is nasty gross, really gross yeah nobody <laughs> eats it here so so chlorella is your best bet for that so because um chlorella has so many nutrients that are healing the chlorophyll the dna the rna the polio toxins we generally recommend people take it. You can take it as much as you want throughout the day, but definitely before you go to bed. And here's okay. why: when you go to, when you are in a deep sleep, that's when your body goes through its repair and um, and uh, detox cycle. Um, and that during that cycle is when all your cells are, you know, getting together. It's, it's basically, you know, while you're having your beauty sleep, you've got the cleanup crew in there getting rid of all the, you know, garbage from the day, uh, toxins that you encountered. And it's not just toxins in the outer world. I don't know, you know, our bodies are constantly remodeling and you have 35 trillion cells, I think, in our body. And so, you know, when, when you're remodeling, that means you're getting new, re- new cells. Where do you think the old cells go? Well, if you don't remove them, they stay there and they gather bacteria and they become toxic and they change 
cells from you know healthy uh, alkaline to a, to an acidic environment, which encourages you know uh, causes less cell communication and causes cellular damage and can attract disease. So you mm-hmm. want to get rid of your even if you lived in a bubble, you would still need to be pulling out the the the, the trash, taking out the trash that from metabolic processes. It's mm-hmm. just stuff. When you are digesting, when you're eliminating, when you're breathing, there's just byproducts that are are toxic and you have to take them out just like you take the trash out every day. If you didn't take the trash out for seven days in your apartment or your home, I mean, it would get pretty smelly. Well, just imagine that going on in your body. So I say taking chlorella every day is like giving your body a shower from the inside. You know, we, you just, it just get rid of whatever's going on. And when you do it during the nighttime, it's that much more efficient and it will facilitate a nice bowel movement in the morning because it stimulates peristalsis. Um, I'm not sure people know that when you are in a deep sleep, your brain shrinks a little bit and it has its own lymphatic system um, to clean out everything. And so because the chlorella attaches to toxins, you know, just think of it as like a -a scrub-a-dub pulling out, sucking out any aluminum that might be there or um, any other toxins that might be anywhere else. Glyphosate, it's, you know, impossible to avoid these days. Mm-hmm. So it's very, it's very healthy and healing that way. Um, and because your body's recycling itself when you're sleeping, then you might as well get the best, the best bang for your buck by having chlorella in your system while you're doing that. Yeah. You mentioned a lot there. I mean, from heavy metals to cleaning out the intestines, uh, senescent cells, zombie cells, and then cellular turnover. I know a good amount of people who have had um, children with autism and they suspected Mm -hmm. that it was linked to certain injections that their kids got and this and that. And, And their kids had all sorts of digestive problems that then contributed to things. And Chlorella was a big contributing factor in getting them back speaking, yeah. making eye contact and getting yeah. rid of not just the heavy metals, but also I would suspect that if, if parasites are present right in the gut, yeah. that the body then has a higher toxic burden than if it was just dealing with the, to- the toxins that we produce on our own. Right. And if you're taking chlorella at night before bed, it's then going through and mopping up, not just our waste, but also the waste of parasites and things like that. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, it yeah. can be incredibly healing. So this is, yeah. um, this yeah, is very, very good for autistic children. Very good. ADHD, yeah. Uh, yeah. pregnant moms, nursing moms. Like I said, there's virtually nobody in the world that doesn't benefit from from both the spirulina and the chlorella, uh, but chlorella is definitely the healing algae of the two of them. But there are some pretty cool things I'll circle back to about spirulina that uh, is related to mitochondria, which is the best hack of the world. Yeah, um, I'm digging it. So just rough, rough idea back of the napkin timing here. The spirulina is kind of like morning, take it in the morning on an empty stomach to energize. And then the chlorella, you take it before bed for repair and recovery. Yeah, And it can be empty stomach. It can be with food. Uh, if, if you don't have time to eat, it's it will uh, fill you up for an hour or two. Uh, lots of people get a two o'clock slump. Uh, it's a part of your uh, cyclical um uh, rhythm. It's it's quite natural. And you can even take it before bed. It will not keep you up. It's not that kind of energy. The way we describe how you feel is you just feel fresh. You might not even notice it unless you were doing a very hardcore workout, uh, but you feel alert and um, you feel fresh, like you just are ready for the day. And that's a pretty sweet way to feel every single day with limited effort um, to get there. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And guys, you're listening, just uh, if you want to check this stuff out, you can go to energybits.com. We've got a discount code biohacks, B-I-O-H-A-C-K-S set up for you. So it's E-N-E-R-G-Y-B-I-T-S.com. And the discount code is biohacks. Um, yeah, let's circle back to spirulina. And and I've read a lot of exciting stuff on the, the phycocyanin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. as it pertains to light and that sort of thing. And, yeah. and, and I would imagine that that ties into the mitochondria. But um, let's talk about some of the ways that, that biohackers could use spirulina, even chlorella, um, yeah. and, and that sort of thing. 
yeah. some of the cool stuff you're seeing. Uh, this time well, I'll, I'll talk, I'll mention just two things about phycocyanin and then I want to get, I'll get to this other nutrient that you may not be very familiar with, but you definitely want to know about. So yeah. phycocyanin um, has been proven to help prevent uh, tumors and cancers because what it does is it has a capability called anti-angiogenesis. Now, angiogenesis is the growth of blood vessels. And mm -hmm. when you have tumors or cancers, they basically hijack your blood vessels and reroute them to feed the blood into the tumor. And for whatever reason, phycocyanin has, an, has this ability to prevent that. That's why it's called anti-angiogenesis. And mm -hmm. um, it's well-documented. Uh, we didn't even know about it. We were contacted by the Angiogenesis uh, uh, Society, which is based here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, angio.org, if you're interested. Um, but anyways, the other cool thing about um, phycocyanin is it has uh, uh, an ability to uh, intercept the, the COVID virus. And the way it does that is that it sits on top of the ACE2 receptor cell. And then we're getting a little geeky here. Apologize. So the ACE2 receptor cells are where the virus enters your body. And most of these types of cells are in your mouth, your nose, your lungs, your throat, and your stomach. That, uh, um, but for whatever reason, this phycocyanin sits on top of that cell and basically repels the virus. So it just, because you've seen this virus has got those tentacles and it, that's how it enters into your cell. It attaches to the cell and then, you know, it's RNA gets into your DNA and that's how it unravel, you know, re repeat. But the mm -hmm. phycocyanin prevents that. So it just washes through your body. And proof of this is that the University of Pittsburgh um, pharmacology department has developed a um, virus, uh, COVID virus, uh, um, vaccine, no spray, uh, which based on algae. And so, um, because that's one of the pre mm. prevalent entry points is the nose because of the ACE2 receptor cells. So phycocyanin has amazing properties. There's endless benefits to it. Um, but, uh, those are two that you might want to know about, but the other thing I want you to know about is why another key reason why you want to take spirulina is because you know, we, we, we are aware that all of our health issues start at the cellular level. I did mention briefly the cell wall, but inside the cell are these mitochondria uh, and there's more of them in heavy energy based cells like your brain and your muscles. Nonetheless, they generate something called ATP, which is the energy currency for your cells. Now, this ATP not only occurs in the mitochondria, it, it occurs inside what's called the inner membrane. Your you have your cell wall, and then inside that you have your mitochondria, and inside that you have uh, these two more two additional layers. It's sort of like an ICE unit. <laughs> the the mitochondria are very you know the cells are very smart. They know that the mitochondria are so important that they need to protect them. So they've got these like triple layers of cell walls to to look after that. So here and so that and it works. But here's the downside. That ATP generation, oh, let me say, I'll back up. The, the, uh, you may not know this, but your mitochondria have their own DNA. You have your cell DNA and you have mitochondria DNA. Now there's 25,000 DNA cells in your body and only 37 of them are in the mitochondria. So hardly anything, but it turns out, this is the new science, turns out that those 37 DNA in the mitochondria control everything. They are like at the, the airport control. Op. They control all cellular communication. They control um, who's going to get disease, who's going to die, autophagy. Uh, so, and here's the problem. The mitochondria DNA are located exactly where the ATP is produced. It's like sitting, and the ATP is like a fire, right? So it's generating all this, this energy. And the, the DNA are ringside. So it's like, if you get too close to a fire, you get sparks, right? And you could, you could flame out. Well, that's what happens to your mitochondria DNA. That's why the average lifespan of your mitochondria DNA is somewhere between 15 and 30 days. And guess what? Your regular called nuclear DNA in your cells, which are located far, far away from the mitochondria, they last a lifetime. So you got lifetime DNA and mitochondria DNA lasting 15 days because they're getting burned out by all the free radicals that get released during the ATP production. 
So your DNA, your mitochondria DNA are, they're the ones that put, they're like Oz. They're pulling all the meat levers about your disease, your longevity, your health, everything. And yet they're ringside. So you've got to protect them. But here's the problem. Virtually no free rat, no antioxidants can penetrate that second inner layer of membrane. It, they can get into the cell. You, your regular antioxidants and fruits and vegetables and whatever, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, they can even get into the first layer of the membrane, but they can't get into that inner circle of the second membrane. There's only a few antioxidants that can. And there's this one antioxidant called superoxide dismutase. I know it's a mouthful, also known as SOD, because the most harmful antioxidant that's released during the ATP production. And I know this is getting pretty sciencey, but the most damaging our, our audience is cool with it. Okay. The most damaging free radical is something called superoxide. So superoxide dismutase basically converts it into water and protects your mitochondria DNA. But here's the problem. There's virtually no S superoxide dismutase in our food. There's a little bit in cabbage and you can buy SOD supplements now, but they've realized that even the supplements or the food, God, the SOD gets damaged during, um, during digestion. So it doesn't make its way to the mitochondria. Uh, the other problem is now your body j makes its own SOD all the time. But as you age, it's, there's less and less and less of it. And by the time you're like 60 or 70, it's making about 10% of what it did when you were young. This is, it all starts to make sense why people slide into disease and aging um, when, as they get older because they have fewer mitochondria. They have more damaged and mutated uh, mitochondria DNA. They have, their body generates less SOD to protect them. And that spirulina has the highest concentration of superoxide dismutase in the world. There's 24,000 units per um, uh, of SOD in 30 tablets of, of spirulina. And they did a scientific study that found just 104 units was enough to uh, stop people's fatigue, um, disease, anxiety, just 104. And, and so it, I think in four tablets, we have 3,000 so, you know, units of superoxide dismutase. And if that doesn't convince you to start using spirulina to protect your mitochondria DNA, chlorophyll, by the way, is another one of the few antioxidants that can make it, its way into that inner membrane. So is CoQ10, uh, which is used as part of the um, uh, um, mitochondria transport chain. Um, and we can circle back to talk about the chlorophyll and how it generates. I would imagine molecular hydrogen too. Pardon me? I would yeah. imagine molecular hydrogen. Yeah. Too well. Yeah. So, um, but in our foods, you know, you think, oh, you're taking all these great antioxidants. Well, they, they yes, they're fine for the other cells, but they will not make their way into that inner membrane. And because the mitochondria DNA control everything. And like I say, this is pretty new science. And I was down a rabbit hole for almost a month researching this. And it's like, are you kidding me? And so here's why you want our out spirulina and not somebody else's. Superoxide dismutase is a enzyme. Okay. And when you, all the other companies that are out there, when they, because they're less expensive and so they make their money by high volume, which means they got to get to market quickly. So they use high heat to dry their algae. We've never been that kind of company. We do not use high heat to dry either our spirulina or our chlorella. So all of our enzymes, including superoxide dismutase, are still live. That's all huge. those all those other companies, and I just discovered this literally like weeks ago. I kept wondering, why is it? Like I knew different things that we were doing, you know, we triple thrill third spring want water and we don't use binders and the blah, blah, blah. But there was something I was missing and this was it. If you makes a lot of use sense. high heat, you kill the all the enzymes, including superoxide dismutase. So you're not getting the benefits of it. And when you have 
your mitochondria being healthy, there's going to be more of them and they're going to replace each other. They're going to grow faster, which of course generates the ATP, which is why you get energy. And, and, and as you generate more ATP in the places where you need it the most, like your brain and your muscles, you're going to be more able to think your way through your day or, or work your way, whatever. Like we were always, I knew there was something I was missing when our athletes who were runners and triathletes and were exercising outside kept just going crazy about how much energy this stuff gave them. And, and it turns out, I think it's partly because of this, because they're, they have so many mitochondria in their muscles. And so when their muscles are getting all this great SOD to, to preserve them, to help keep the, the um, mitochondria healthy. And the fact that chlorophyll we found out also generates its own ATP when it's exposed to red light. And of course, a lot of these runners are outside in the light. It just made, I just thought that's it. It's it's the light and the fact that they're so um, elite and they have so many muscles with so many mitochondria and the SOD and the chlorophyll are like super test. It's just off the charts. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Like you, you literally are the first person I'm telling this to because this is all new discovery for me. The science has been around for like 50 years, but it's just not you know, nobody put it together the way I have about. It, it makes yeah. complete sense. And and I would imagine that's very rarely even disclosed by these companies because they're trying to, you know, kind of churn and burn high output, short period of time. It's, it's like the, the cheap wines, yeah. you know what I mean? They use anti-foaming agents and all this garbage that, yeah. that allows them to make the wine faster, but it actually makes a lot of people feel terrible. Yeah. Like, above and beyond just the alcohol. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. and they're doing the same thing with heat and spirulina yeah. to turn yeah. it around faster, but it's killing all the enzymes. Yeah. So I always, you know, I was always so proud that our, we didn't use high heat because it preserved the enzymes. And then I had, you know, now I found out how, how one of the most important anti, um, SOD is considered like the king of antioxidants. The next one down, I think is glutathione, but there's a whole hierarchy, but SOD is like the, the top of the pile and yet it's so difficult to find in any food supply yeah and, even, and um so anyway so that was pretty cool to, to see that and and our algae is not only live it's a raw food the spirulina is a raw food the chlorella is raw or live the chlorella is still raw because we don't use heat but because we have to crack the cell wall it's not it's not live, but I do right. have one more cool thing to tell you about spirulina. Why it's is, so is spirulina amazing. the best food based source that you know of for the sod superoxide yes. dismutase? Yes, yes, yes. And, okay. and it's the most bioavailable because, as I said, other sources I think uh, there's a little tiny bit in in spin in, in uh, cabbage, there's a tiny bit in broccoli, yeah. I think it's in a lot in mostly cruciferous vegetables, but it, there's such small amounts and then they get damaged in the digestive process. Now, mm -hmm. the reason why they don't, doesn't get damaged, spirulina this is the other cool thing. doesn't get, the SOD doesn't get damaged because spirulina is a bacteria, doesn't have a cellulose wall. So it gets absorbed so quickly. It, it almost bypasses digestion. It just gets right into the bloodstream. Yeah. Fascinating. That's, pretty that's, pretty, huh? I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge nugget right there. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm so, I mean, literally this is really fresh information that I've, I've, you know, stumbled over. Well, I wasn't stumble. I was, I just kept thinking of, there's gotta be a reason why this is our, our stuff works so well. And I've, I found out, but uh, yeah, well, we, we appreciate it. This is fantastic. Okay. So some other stuff that you wanted to share yeah. about. Spirulina. Okay. So this, this one's really cool. <laughs> Again, completely science-based, but you had to be looking for it to find it. And it's based on cell biology and the history of earth. So remember I said spirulina was the first life on earth, um, you know, 3 billion years ago. Okay. So think back two or 3 billion years ago, um, you have these little bacteria called cyanobacteria that um, were um, uh, aerobic. So they, they did best um, in oxygen environment and they threw off oxygen. So um, after a billion years, there was a lot more oxygen on earth than there had been before. And there's an, there was another cell group, those, and by the way, those bacteria were called, uh, were called uh, prochoriate, prochoriate, prochoriate. Prokaryotes. I'm not saying it right. Prokaryotes. Prokaryotes. Right. There's another type of cell that was growing called eukaryotes. You, you, eukaryotes. You, eukaryotes. Thank you. I don't know if I'm even saying it right. Yeah, either. you are this, saying this, it right. This, yeah. Okay. And they did not do well in an oxygen environment. So what they did was they these big cells 
started enveloping the little cells that were generating ATP because they did better in oxygen. So the big cells swallowed the little cells, but instead of digesting the little cells, the little cells, the bacteria, just took up residence in the big cell. And uh, because they it made generate- them their slaves. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like, but here's, it's like having your, somebody like an aunt or an uncle or say, can I come and you know live with you for a while? And you, you, you reluctantly say, oh, okay, sure. But then they end up doing your laundry and they do your dishes and they do your grocery shopping. So you think, hey, stay, stay forever. Uh-huh. Well, that's basically what happened with the big cells. They liked the little cells so well, they said, stay, we won't eat you, just stay. Well, guess what? Those little cyanobacteria that got swallowed up by the big cells, drum roll, became mitochondria. Your mitochondria are the same family as spirulina. So as I tell people, when you take spirulina and it gets into your mitochondria, it's like welcoming back one of your family members. It's like, hey, where you been? Thank God you're back. Well, we'll put you to work. They know what to do. That just freaked me out. And it's it's called the endosymbiosis theory. And it's all documented in cell biology. Anybody, endo, E-N-D-O-S-Y-M-B-I-O-S-I-S. Spirulina are your mitochondria. How cool is that? Super cool. And it explains the energy connection. The, 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 the cyanobacteria were generating the ATP anyways. And then they got swallowed up by the big guys and said, hey, why don't you do that for us? And we'll protect you. And uh, da-da. <laughs> so we don't, just, we don't just consume things that fuel the mitochondria. We're actually essentially consuming mitochondria. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just It's just... And you, when you meet yourself, you know what to do with yourself. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it just floors me. And uh, this is the missing piece. Nobody, I, I, I think I am the first person that has really brought this to people's attention. Uh, you are the first person I've talked to about it. So, you know, this is ground. I think this is groundbreaking. I mean, I really, it's crazy. And it's all, and I can hardly wait to give my talk in two weeks at the biohacking congress with all this new material um because it's it's pretty groundbreaking <laughs> yeah it's 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 awesome and you know it's it reiterates the like as above so below as with as without so within you know that like the 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 tiny is a macrocosm of of the large and um and, and that doing things the right way in harmony with nature, even exactly. if you don't necessarily know the health benefits at the time, the science will catch up and explain those benefits. Yeah. Like you being like, okay, we could rush this process and use heat, but that doesn't feel right. So yeah. we're not going to do that. And then yeah. you find out that you're preserving all these enzymes, including yeah. superoxide dismutase. Exactly. I am, uh, you know, like I say, LG found me. I didn't find it. I was not planning on building a company. I just wanted to help my sister. Then I thought I could just help a few more. So everything I've done was with integrity to ensure the health of people that were taking my product. It wasn't at all to make, I, I have never actually paid myself. In 12 years. So this is truly a labor of love. And, and you know, the United Nations back in 1974 uh, recognized that algae could feed the world and it still can. And it will if I get can continue to grow because I have very big plans to get this where it needs to be used. And as we get bigger, we'll you know be able to do drops to, you know, crisis areas. And we'll, we plan to grow our own here in America, probably in Northern Florida it has to be a similar climate as where we have, we have it grown for us in Taiwan, but uh, algae is, is truly going to change the world. Uh, and, and I, I, I and, love that and totally agree. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was my friends and my family, they all thought I just was crazy. And I can understand why, because I had no science background, no nutrition background. Uh, uh, I'm pretty much self-taught, but there was something in me. There was a voice in me that said, keep going. (laughs) Don't stop. Um, 
And uh, and now you're right. The science has caught up with what I felt was the right thing to do. And I am can't be happier and more excited to see how we can help people be healthy and stop all this crazy cancer and diabetes. If you give your body what it needs and stop mm. putting in what it doesn't, it will heal itself. And it's For also sure. the most eco-friendly, sustainable crop in the world. So when you're he healing yourself, you're healing the world at the same time. So a hundred percent guys, if, if you've resonated with uh, this message, if you're excited, you want to try energy bits, go to www.energybits.com. We've got a biohacks discount code set up for you. And I love that, that mission too, about helping with world hunger. I mean, yeah. 9 million people yeah. die. I think it's every year. From just from hunger, just from yeah. not having enough food. It's 25,000 people a day. Yeah. And the the role that spirulina and chlorella could play oh, in yeah. correcting that, it's it's very, very promising. That's yeah. like like a light bulb just went off. Like that needs to happen. Yeah. I you know, I, you know I, I I was on Shark Tank a few years ago, only for the visibility. I didn't want their money and they didn't invest. And I've kept investors out because I'm trying to build a company with you know complete integrity um, and with a larger cause. Like we're not technically a B corporation, but we operate like we are one. And I just we're just at the starting line because there's so many things that we can do to help heal the world, um, both here and anywhere. And uh, um, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. So <laughs> I say, yeah, it's just a little algae love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I I'm very appreciative of what you're doing. Our, our listeners I'm sure are, are very appreciative and uh, thank you so much for yeah, coming welcome. on and, and sharing your wisdom. This has been yeah. a lot of fun. Well, I, and, and just to, for those again, who aren't familiar with algae, I just want to assure you, algae isn't new. It's just new to you. And um, it's been used in indigenous countries for centuries, just like, you know, chia or matcha or kiwa or lots of other things. It just isn't grown here. Not yet anyways. So that's why you don't know about it. But trust me, the science is there. The history is there. Um, and the way that you will feel is real. <laughs> so. go, go to energybits.com, enter discount code biohacks to save yourself some money. And uh, yeah, I've been taking spirulina and chlorella and I love yours. Um, I'm taking them both right now. They're fantastic products. I, I, I give them both my stamp of appeal. So <laughs> Catherine, thank you so much for what you do. Indeed. Thank you for coming on and sharing Indeed. your wisdom. And uh, we'll have to have you back on when you've yeah. got some other cool new discoveries and things to yeah. share. Yeah, you bet. <laughs>